What if the reason you're losing muscle and energy after 50 isn't just getting old, but you're missing the specific nutrients that men our age are often deficient in? Let's be real. I'm 60 now, and I didn't get in shape until after I turned 45. Strength, energy, and confidence didn't just come from hard work alone. In this video, I'll share the five supplements that science shows fills the most common gaps for men over 50 and amplify your results. Plus, you'll learn why testing, rather than guessing, makes your stack personal and effective. And remember, nothing replaces the foundation of quality whole foods and regular progressive resistance training. Muscle growth after 50 is built on progressive resistance training. Clinical trials show supervised resistance workouts not only spur muscle growth, but also preserve insulin sensitivity, which lowers diabetes risk and keeps your metabolism firing. Supplements can be helpful, but they're not a shortcut. If you aren't prioritizing a wide variety of whole foods, no pill will solve the problem. However, age, lifestyle, and dieting can cause hidden deficiencies, making choosing the right supplements backed by lab tests a smart move. You can actually test for most major nutrient gaps before you start, so you're not throwing darts in the dark. A controlled meta-analysis showed creatine supplementation during resistance training can add an average of 1.37 kilograms of lean muscle in older adults, as well as increasing both their upper and lower body strength, making it one of the most proven muscle builders. Now, if you're one of the 20 to 30 percent of people who are non-responders, that number might seem pretty hard to believe. I know I've certainly never gotten those kind of results, which isn't surprising, as those who tend to eat a lot of red meat have higher creatine levels and are less affected by supplementation. Now that's not the only reason to take creatine. There's emerging research pointing to memory and mental speed improvements in seniors using creatine. The typical dose, three to five grams a day. If you want, you can do a 20 gram loading phase for five days when you first start. It's optional though. If you just take five grams a day for about a month, your stores will be fully topped up. Now some do report mild bloating or upset stomach. To prevent this, split your dose into smaller servings. For example, 2 grams twice daily, and always take it with plenty of water. Creatine is safe to use if you have healthy kidneys, but if you're concerned, checking your kidney function before beginning is smart, especially if you're over 50. For omega-3s, most men over 50 need at least 2 grams of combined EPA and DHA daily to support muscle protein synthesis, tame inflammation, and boost cognitive protection. The American Heart Association and large controlled studies show regular omega-3 intake lowers the risk of heart attack and can improve triglyceride control. To hit that target through food, you'll need two servings of 3 to 4 ounces of fatty fish, like salmon, mackerel, or sardines per week. It turns out you can test your omega-3 status. Now, I've never had it done, but I plan to ask my doctor about getting an omega-3 index test as it'll provide a snapshot of my current status and could guide me if I need to supplement. Vitamin D deficiency is linked with 70% higher risk of age-related muscle weakness or dynapenia in men over 50. Research supports supplementing if blood work shows you're low, especially if you're often indoors, have darker skin, or live somewhere where the winters are long like me. Magnesium helps activate vitamin D and is involved in muscle function and bone strength. Though the evidence for broad supplementation is still developing, you can test blood levels of both vitamin D and magnesium. You can also check the status of the next supplement we're about to talk about, and that's calcium. Well, you can do a blood test to see your calcium levels. A DEXA scan is a better indicator of bone mineral density, including minerals like calcium and magnesium. One of the best ways to improve your bone mineral density is resistance training. So if you're taking a calcium supplement, but not resistance training, you're making a mistake. Calcium and vitamin D are vital for those at risk of fracture. While data on supplementing with vitamin K2 and magnesium are promising, they're not yet conclusive for universal bone health. It's not that they aren't important, it's just that there's still a question concerning the effectiveness of taking them as a supplement instead of whole foods. The best sources of vitamin K2 are fermented foods like sauerkraut and kefir. Eggs from pasture-raised hens are also a good choice. Vitamin D boosts how much calcium you can absorb. Still, you also need enough vitamin K2 to send that calcium into your bones, instead of letting it settle dangerously in the arteries or soft tissues creating calcification of the arteries. The best approach is splitting calcium doses, no more than 500 milligrams at a time, pairing that with the recommended dose for men of 120 micrograms of vitamin K2, preferably in the form of MK7. Here's the final piece. 
Controlled clinical studies show older men can maximally stimulate muscle protein synthesis every meal with up to 40 grams of high quality protein, preferably from a whole food source, but you can use a supplement like whey isolate. With younger men, it only takes 20 to 25 grams, which leads us to the question, is aging and anabolic resistance really the reason we need more protein, or is there something else going on? Watch this video next to find out and keep working out while having fun. This is Lawrence from Fit and 50. We'll talk to you in the next video.